Smart contracts are going to change the world as we know it. Anywhere where there's money being transferred from one person or one entity to another, smart contracts will disrupt that industry, which is basically every single industry. We're talking trillions of dollars of disruption. Now, many of you wanted me to do an all-inclusive smart contract video, and that is exactly what we're going to do today. We're gonna to talk about how smart contracts started, how they work, and some potential use cases for smart contracts that are extremely, extremely exciting. And in order to explain all of this, of course, I have made a dirt, dirt nasty, I don't know why you guys like when I call that, a dirt nasty flow chart. Now these flow charts are getting more and more crazy looking by the day. Someone, was, someone actually said that I should turn one of these into an NFT and then sell it as an NFT. That might be the, the best or the dumbest idea I've ever heard, but uh, it's pretty funny. So anyways, let's get into smart contracts. Oh, and by the way, if you want access to be able to download all of these, go ahead and join the Patreon. And thank you to everyone who has joined. I can't believe the turnout and I can't believe how uh, how much people have been appreciative of the Patreon and the community that we have built around that. It's been, it's been a really awesome thing. So smart contracts, let's get into it. How it began. The term smart contract was first used in 1994 by Nick Sabo, who was a computer scientist, a cryptographer, and potentially Satoshi Nakamoto. There's some rumors. There's some rumors that Nick is actually Satoshi Nakamoto because Nick also invented a virtual currency called BitGold in 1998, 10 years before Bitcoin was invented. Now he has said, hey, I'm not Satoshi, but it seems like a pretty pretty good contender if you ask me. Anyways, Nick is a smart ape and he, is, he had the idea of using a distrib distributed decentralized ledger to store and manage contracts for real world use. Very smart cookie. Smart contracts, however, became more popular because of another man, Vitalik Buterin, who is the founder of Ethereum. Absolute genius as well. Ethereum is the most popular general use smart contract platform, but there are other options, including ADA, EOS, DOT, and TRX, all in various stages in their smart contract implementation. No one has done it in an extremely user-friendly way quite yet. That's important to note, but it, it is the future nevertheless. You, you'll understand once we get further into this. So what are smart contracts? A contract, except it's smart. My boys wait, it's smart. <laughs> in that it operates independently, automatically, and completely decentralized from any outside entity. There was no one entity or person controlling how the smart contract executes after the agreement has been made. So a smart contract operates using if-then logic, making it easy to code and seamless when executing. It's actually so black and white that there's some complaints about how there isn't enough gray area within smart contracts, but that's just one kink that will need to be worked out in the future as this tech just becomes more and more robust. So if blank is true, then execute blank terms. It's as simple as that. That's all a smart contract is. You might be thinking that's what a contract is. Yeah, it, it's a contract that does a little bit more than a typical like paper dumb contract, if you will. <laughs> smart contracts remove the human element from an agreement, which is arguably the largest point of failure in any agreement. Human equals no go. Human, humans are the problem, I guess. Uh, <laughs> more, spe more specifically, we're gonna go through the steps here. It's a contract in which First, the terms are agreed upon by two parties. I think there's only optimization for two parties as of right now. Uh, maybe there's integration for three, but I'm still learning about all of this as well. There are smarter people in the space, so I'm just doing my best to present everything that I have learned in my due diligence on the subject. Also, if you're interested in buying any of the various smart contract coins that I referenced earlier, any of these, check out the, the KuCoin exchange that I have linked down in the description. That's the exchange that I use for pretty much all of my buying and selling and lending and staking and things like that. I'm a big fan of that exchange. It's got more, it's more of an advanced exchange. If you're looking for a beginner exchange, you might want to start with Coinbase, which is also linked down in the description. They, don't, they just don't have quite as many options on that exchange. So first off, it's a contract in which the terms are agreed upon by two parties. The agreement is written in code and distributed on a blockchain network. It does not require a third party to manage the contract or keep anyone honest. It is a trustless system. That is important. This is because the entire blockchain is an immutable ledger, meaning you can't change it. It is public. It is publicly verifiable. Third, the code sits 
and it waits and it waits a little bit more until specific conditions are met. And that contract could be fed information through an Oracle. So real world information could be fed to that contract. It all depends on whether it needs real world data or not. We're gonna go through some examples in a couple minutes here. Fourth, the contract automatically executes once the specific if conditions are met, then the then executes. So uh, a commonly used example of the logic in a smart contract of a non-smart contract situation, just to try to put this into a situation that's a little bit easier to understand, is a vending machine, a simple vending machine. So the vending machine is constantly looking for specific criteria to be met, and once that criteria is met, it spits out a spicy beverage. So the logic is this. If the bill reader detects $2, then it gives a slurpy drink to a thirsty, thirsty boy. I don't know. The only issue with the vending machine is it could fairly easily be hacked where a blockchain is almost impossibly hack proof. Almost. It'd be very hard to hack. Recap of the benefits of smart contracts real quick. Efficiency, efficiency and a no middleman, which means less friction, faster completion, and less money to execute any deal. Everything becomes more efficient and less costly with a smart contract. Trustless and decentralized. There's no one point of failure and you don't even have to know. You don't have to trust the person on the other side of the agreement. It doesn't matter what their credit is. None of that matters. And automated. No one needs to act. It's all automatic. We love that. All right. Now let's get into some real world use cases. We have a nice little, I don't even know, a nice little spiral here. So first off, gambling. This is a good use for the, the Oracle that pulls real world data. You could have a bet with someone that a basketball game is going to end up with a score of this team winning by more than 10 points. And you could have a smart contract set beforehand with an Oracle feeding that contract data after the game completes the contract would execute, the winner would automatically receive their money. It's a very, gambling is a very, very easy use case for smart contracts. Next, we have healthcare. This one's a little bit more interesting. Patient data could be stored on a blockchain, which makes, which makes it private. Of course, the, the private part would not be public to, to everyone. It would, it would allow patients to own their data which could also be interesting, meaning they could sell their data to like research studies instead of just having their data out there and just being used and you don't really know what's going to happen with it. So, there, so there's some interesting use cases there and there's actually companies doing that as of right now. Trading securities, so buying something like a stock could be easily done with a smart contract where you have a simple buyer and a seller and this would also do away with a lot of the T plus two trading period that, that's kind of an issue with stocks where there's literally a two day waiting period as of right now for the transference of a stock from one owner to another and a smart contract could fairly easily simplify that and make it less costly. Buying real estate, you could theoretically buy real estate with a smart contract and this would do away the need for any kind of payment for someone to transfer a title because it would happen automatically and escrow basically would go away altogether. There's no need for escrow if you have a smart contract that simply is an if-then statement. If you pay this much money, then the deed for the house gets transferred to your name. It's, it's as simple as can be. Buying anything from a marketplace could be duplicated, replicated, and made better by a smart contract. There's no need for a middleman mediator if both parties uphold their side of a deal automatically. You don't need like an eBay or an Amazon for, for like a direct seller. If there's a smart contract that simply says you pay X amount of dollars, you receive item A. It, it literally can be that simple. Now, of course, with each of these examples, we could go much more in depth and you can pick out things like, oh, what if, what if this situation happens when you're buying or selling something online? What would you do? Well, that's just the kinks that would need to be worked out in the smart contract system. And then next, insurance. This one's very exciting in my opinion. Insurance is fairly boring, but it could reduce a lot of the potential bloat and cost of insurance. How it works right now is you and a bunch of other individuals pay into an insurance company into what's called the float for the insurance company. You're all paying a small amount to be protected for an event that is unlikely so that those who see the unlikely event get paid out effectively by everyone else. 
However, in that float and in the holding of the money and the facilitating of the insurance company, there's a lot of costs, administrative costs to pay employees and the profits from the insurance company. There's a lot of expenses there. There could be a smart contract set up where there are people who want to be insured and insurance investors and a smart contract in the middle. The people who want to be insured pay into the smart contract. If an event happens, it automatically executes and pays out that claim through some kind of real world oracle. And then you have insurance investors who are hopefully making a return off of that investment, cutting out a lot of the bloat and the friction that is created by a traditional insurance company. That's something that, that would change the world if, it, if and when it's implemented properly. And then let's just do a brief conclusion here. Smart contracts have use cases literally everywhere. You can probably think of an example. If you think of an interesting example, make sure you comment that down below and could disrupt literally everything. It will likely be a while though before smart contracts facilitate everything in the business world and in your life. Chances are by the time it's everywhere, we're just gonna call them contracts. It won't even be called a smart contract. It'll just literally be, this is a contract. But in the long run, it's the most logical solution. It just makes sense. Over time, middlemen become smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually go away. You used to have to call your stockbroker to buy a stock. Now you can buy it pretty much for free. Smart contracts will allow for pretty much every industry to do something similar to that. And it is extremely exciting and I'm very hopeful. And it makes me excited about the future in general, just to see the efficiency and, and researching this and feeling like we are kind of living in the future. It's just exciting to go through. So I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. I hope, hope that you learned something new. If you did, just make sure you hit that subscribe button because I would appreciate that. And I have tons, tons more great, interesting content coming your way. So I'd just like to thank you again for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.